The views and opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the Del Mar TV Foundation or the City of Del Mar. Del Mar Hot Topics, where we discuss issues that are important to you. And now your host, Richard Levesque. We have a lovely beach. We have a great park. Is the San Diego Lagoon the next jewel in the Del Mar crown? My guests are Jacqueline Wintra from the Friends of the River Park, Dick Bulberts, the Executive Director of the San Diego River Park, and John McGowan, Professor Emeritus of Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Stay tuned for Hot Topics. Commuters curse the clogged lanes of I-5, likely unaware of the transformation awaiting the San Diego Lagoon. Once the largest coastal lagoon in San Diego, it is greatly diminished by fill from highway and property development. Large dams upstream have diminished the marshes and freshwater inflow. Since the 1940s, the lagoon's mouth has been closed unless winter storms or bulldozers intervene. Further inland, the river source on Vulcan Mountain is the beginning of the San Diego River Park. The River Park is a project to preserve natural open space along 55 miles of the San Diego River Valley. The River Park extends from north of Julian to the Pacific Ocean in Del Mar. This coastal region is ecologically important for migrating birds, fish hatcheries, and the endangered species that nest and forage here. It's equally important to visitors and residents who enjoy the buffer of native landscape amid bustling freeways, growing residential tracts, and agricultural ventures. The 150-acre wetland restoration is intended to mitigate the marine impact of the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. Environmental impact studies, coastal development permits, lawsuits, and nesting birds have delayed the project's start. Leaving some to wonder, whether the scenic Coast to Crest Trail will be fully realized. Eighty million dollars invested in this project by Southern California Edison and is it really going to start soon? What's it going to take to finish this project? And what's it going to mean to you, the residents? And why are we so lucky that it, this lagoon was chosen? Dick, why this lagoon? Um, <clears throat> first of all, why a lagoon, I think, is a real question. And uh, a lagoon is worth preserving for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, you can't create a lagoon just anywhere. 95% uh, of the wetlands in the state of California have been lost through, through development projects, um, uh, all sorts of uh, 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 things that have taken out those lagoons and those, those wetlands, never to return. Now, we're, how can we get more of this uh, habitat uh, uh, that is so important to us? This is the best opportunity in all of Southern California to actually restore a lagoon to something close to what it used to be. And that's why it's important in this, in this particular area. The geology is, is not, is not uh, uh, conducive to creating lagoons like this. You know, rivers meet the ocean. But it has to be a specific type of geology to allow a lagoon to form uh, to create for the uh, habitat to occur. Uh, and in our lagoon here in San Diego, we have the best opportunity to do that. So we can, we can add a habitat that, is, that we've almost lost entirely. And that habitat will support uh, vegetation and animals and birds that are also endangered. So that's why it's so important, this lagoon now. Great. Jacqueline, some people might say we need more housing. Why, why do we need a lagoon? Well, I, I will tell you in my view what is the most extraordinary thing about this project is that when you think of the large national parks in the U.S., most of them were created at the end of the 1800s in the 19th century. Uh, this is creating 
a national park in the 21st century. And while you consider big parks like the Yosemite and um, any of the other large ones, they are areas that are set aside and people go and visit them. Here, the park is among us. We are learning to live side by side with the wildlife and respecting the natural vegetation. And so that my, my great hope, and, and this is um, maybe shocking for some people, but I personally feel that, that zoos are terrible places for animals. When you think of it, they really are concentration camps mm -hmm. for animals. And by creating natural spaces where the animals and the vegetation can live parallel lives with, with ourselves, we are accomplishing something very revolutionary. And what is very beautiful about this area is that not only are we developing the San Dieguito Lagoon, but we're develop developing most of the others. Mm -hmm. The only one that, that is left dangling is the San Diego Valley, and, and it's a little bit late for that one. Um, Fashion Valley is there, <laughs> it's not going to go away, but they're, they're trying. So yeah. I think it's something very revolutionary that is happening here. Okay. So do you agree, John, that this is a unique lagoon? There's no question that these coastal lagoons are unique. <clears throat> they're important, well, they're important to me personally because I am a naturalist and I happen to think they're beautiful in their natural state and I have seen some lagoons in their natural state. But more importantly, they function as a drainage system for a huge area uh, that water has to go someplace, and not only the water, but all its, all the contained uh, uh, variables. And these lagoon areas are uh, functional in the sense that they drain huge, big systems of our rainwater. Mm -hmm. So they're absolutely necessary to have some kind of a drainage system. And in addition to that, over the eons of time that they've evolved, uh, they have a uniqueness, a biological uniqueness, that is, uh, can't be duplicated in any other system. Mm -hmm. John, you make, a, you make an excellent point that the lagoon is the end point of the entire river mm -hmm. system. And it's a 55 mile long system. And so yeah. it, it's, there's yeah. over 240,000 acres you know, that drain into this lagoon. And uh, the river park, our job is to, to preserve the habitat along the entire river channel and to restore habitat wherever it's feasible. But the lagoon is such an important part of it because it is such a unique habitat. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what we're going to do in the lagoon uh, is probably more important than all the habitat restoration we'll be doing all the way up the line because uh, the lagoon habitat is, is, the most is among the most unique habitats in the entire world and also the most productive bio biologically. Uh, it's been compared to a tropical rainforest. It's more biologically productive mm -hmm. than a tropical rainforest, wow. as far as the ha uh, the habitat, the animals, the birds, uh, uh, all of it, all of what it supports, and the tidal flushing uh, uh, is such a unique uh, uh, system because you know the tide comes in, you know it fills up, the tide goes out, you've got mud flats and 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 the specific plants and animals that take advantage of that habitat are unique and uh, and among themselves. And, and losing that opportunity would be a, a tragedy for generations. And, and Jacqueline, the point you were making about how it's so important to the, to the community, and you touched a little bit on the educational perspective. Uh, this, is a, this is a laboratory for teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be bringing school kids out to educate them about uh, the importance of, of the lagoon and the river system and, and water in our lives. Uh, so it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful asset, not only for, for Del Mar, but for the entire region. Yeah, go on, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one feature of the park is that there is a plan to have the Coast to Crest Trail. And so, some segments of it are already completed. It, at the present time, it looks like a dashed line. Some mm -hmm. segments are completed, some of them are conceptual. They will be there in the future. But what people are not aware of yet, I think, is that many existing trails elsewhere in the area will be connecting with that trail so that 
uh, with the dense populations that we have in our area, I think people within five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour will be able to go and run along the park. They are not going to have mm -hmm. to go and drive again to Yosemite, as I was seeing yeah. earlier. It will be right there for them, for their use and appreciation and participation. I have a question about trails. I, I, I'm not familiar with the details yeah. of the plan, but uh, in addition to hiking trails, Will there be uh, equestrian trails, for example, or there will be or, uh, mountain trail. bike trails? And, that's and there will be mountain bike that. trails, yeah. yes. Um, we will not have equestrians at the very end portion uh, through the lagoon. No. Um, uh, the Coastal Commission that. has advised that. us that that would not be the proper thing sure, to do. Sure. Uh, but because of the manure generated. Uh, it, it brings uh, seeds and so forth into the area that I you know we, we don't want to, to start uh, plant colonies of, of plants that, sh that shouldn't There's be in the There's already a lot of horses down in the lagoon end, you know. At the, at the, the other Alabama race yeah, track. Yeah, 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 5,000 yeah. of them during the season. That's now. true. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure that number. And there's there. also a, a, a big equestrian yeah. community you know, yeah. to the east yes. of El Camino Real. Right. Yes, there are. Uh, yeah. But the idea is to try to, to, to keep that you know, out at the edges and not bring it through. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in any case, uh, yes, there will be a, a mountain biking, uh, equestrian, and, mm -hmm. uh, and hiking mm -hmm. uh, all the way up the river, the entire 55 miles, all the way to the top mm -hmm. of Vulcan Mountain. And now we're, now we're planning on going down the other side of Vulcan Mountain and down into Anza Borrega. Really? Yes. I hadn't heard that. Yes. And, uh, It'll all be the way. one of the largest parks in, in, in California. Well, it'll certainly be one of the one of the longest uh, trails that you'll be yeah, able to this, hike. This yes. whole no. concept of a long strip park is really remarkable. And and it's all built around the river. Yeah, the river yeah. is oh, the, the binding yeah. quality uh, through now, the entire. Now, who will police this? What about traffic? <laughs> I mean, will we have? hordes of people doing to it like they've done to no, the mountains. I, don't think, so, so. I hope that they never will be hordes because there will be so many of the trails. Essentially, I, I like to see it as a kind of a lung with with uh, dendritic patterns of, of trails going everywhere. So everybody will have essentially their own trail. Every every neighborhood will have one. And so I don't think that we'll, you will have crowding problems. But I, I, I wanted to bring another aspect of interest is the historical aspect. Yes. When you drive to Los Angeles and you drive through Camp Pendleton, every time I go there I say, this is the way California was. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, whatever you think about the military establishment, I'm grateful <laughs> for the Marine to yeah. preserve the Santa Margarita Ranch yeah. where we see old California. Well, in the lagoon, you are going to have the same experience. Mm -hmm. uh, in the late 1800s, when, when the uh, Spanish uh, occupation was here in Alta California, uh, they, they accompanied the, the likes of Father Junipero Serra with horses. And with the horses, they had to cross the rivers and the lagoons, being as large as they were, they crossed the rivers at the head of the lagoons where the, the river essentially uh, arrived in the mm -hmm. coastal area. Well, in, in our lagoon, the site of that crossing is still there. So if well. you are south of Mary Stack Shop, on, on the bridge crossing the San Diego River, and that you look west, and you pretend that the fair board, the fairgrounds is not there. <laughs> you see what Father Junipero Serra saw. And I well, think this wonderful. is, it, it really is remarkable yeah, that we've remarkable. been able to do that. I think uh, before we, we met here, I, I discussed the, the size of the lagoon with Dick and he, he confirmed that the size of the lagoon at the time of uh, the maximum lagoonal extents was about a thousand uh, acres. In the present time, 700 of these acres are in public hand, land, uh, hands and will be part of the park. And are, they will not be, they are part of the park. Well, what a wonderful, wonderful, exciting thing. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us for this exciting discussion. Welcome back to Hot Topics. With me to discuss the San Dieguito River Park Restoration Project are Jacqueline Winterer, Dick Boberts, and John McGowan. John, sometimes that lagoon stinks. You bet. Tell me about water quality. 
Well, the lagoon stinks because of the breakdown of organic matter by bacteria. And one of the aspects of this entire lagoon uh, project that is not really very much in the public eye has been the uh, bacterial uh, content of the water. And uh, So the stink uh, is a bad thing? Well, of course it is, yes. It's, for one thing, it stinks. And, uh, is it and, 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 and rep Yeah, it's, the bacteria themselves are uh, generally considered by the EPA to be indicators of human um, threats to human uh, so you to, don't to, want, so to you, public health is what I'm searching for. So you don't want and, your kids playing in the lagoon? Well, no, not well. The corrective measure is keeping that lagoon open so there's good ventilation with seawater, which in itself is antibacterial. And the bacterial counts when the lagoon is closed are up, skyrocketing up above EPA standards. When the lagoon is open, they drop by orders of magnitude. And a constantly uh, flushed and, and, uh, and ventilate, well ventilated is the term used, lagoon would keep the bacterial level very, very low. Why would the beach people want that bacterial runoff to go to the ocean? Because Roughly. it dissipates rapidly. I, I believe that it is erroneous to present the opening of the river mouth as a conflict against the beach people. Rivers go to the ocean, it's part of the natural process. You cannot escape it anymore. You cannot say, I like the daytime, but I don't like the night. If you have one, you have the other. If you have a river, it will end up in the ocean. Now, we have interfered with the normal operation of the river the first time when we built 101 and we built the railroad. And so we have to take corrective measures to allow the river to function as it would do naturally if we had not interfered with its functioning. And, and Jacqueline, one of, the, one of the most ironic things about the lawsuit uh, was because uh, some of the beach property owners were concerned about potential erosion and loss of the beach. Yeah. Well, where do beaches come from? Yeah. They come from erosion that is brought to the coast by rivers and, and bluffs uh, as they erode. Those are the two sources of sand beach. And so actually by keeping the river mouth open, we're continuing, we're keeping the, the, the stream of, of, of sediment and which turns into sand for beaches coming to the, coming to the ocean. So uh, that's what made the whole thing, as I say, a little bit ironic. Uh, and, the, and the other aspect of it is that we will be cleaning out the river mouth on a regular basis, probably every eight to 12 months. Uh, we'll be act, it'll, still, it'll still silt up. Uh, and we'll be taking that sand out that has previously been lost from the beaches and placing it on the beaches. Mm -hmm. So in, in essence, we will really be improving the amount of sand that will be on the beaches. Yeah, before urbanization, and that is before Highway 101 and the railroad was built, that lagoon probably kept itself open at least a exactly, good part of the exactly. year. Uh, but now with all these impediments built by man, all these berms, uh, and the it, dam. And Lake Hodges Dam, for sure. In the 1940s, and, right, yeah, when the, all that yeah, development started. And, and uh, yeah. it's been downhill ever since. The same thing is true of all the other estuaries up and down uh, the mm -hmm. coast of Southern California. They're all very functional, uh, well uh, acclimated lagoons, and the highway and the railroad is what started them uh, on this downhill path. And they're very badly polluted. If you consider the size of the, of the drainage system, that runs into them, and all the possible pollutants, they're all concentrated, they all wind up here in Del Mar. Mm -hmm. And unless you keep that thing open and flushed, then, uh, then uh, the situation will keep getting worse and worse and worse. But how do we make sure that people don't keep polluting the tributaries up the valley? It's a difficult thing to keep people from, from doing that. The, the runoff is diffuse, and it's not, uh, it's not sewage. It's from, uh, from all sorts of sources, a hundred different sources, a thousand different sources, and they all come down, it all comes down that storm drain. John, you're, John that, you're, you're right. We're never going to you know, eliminate all I the pollution so. coming down. I don't down. think it can be done. But what we are doing is we're purchasing land upriver, 
and mm -hmm. we've gone through uh, about a five-year purchasing program uh, with state bond money. We spent uh, more than $30 million over the last five years uh, purchasing land right uh, at, at where, where the river runs through it. Yeah. So the, the direct connection of river to land, we have secured much of the land upriver, uh, which will always remain in it's, its natural state now, that, now that we own it. Did, and so that will prevent opportunities for further pollution. Aren't there five or six coal permittees that have storm drains running? That's into? correct. That's, Not that's five correct. or six storm drains, but, but the county of San Diego, the city of San yeah. Diego, right. the city of Del Mar, the city of Solana Beach, all have storm and the racetrack. Escondido, All have storm Poway. Drain and Poway the lead into the lagoon. Yes, yeah, and, and dozens I, and dozens. I don't know how many there are. I want Go to on, speak Jackie. about the, the beach. I think that people are very concerned about the loss of the sand on the beach, and uh, it, the, they were uh, hydrologic engineers who have been involved since day one in the making of this project, and uh, profiles of the beach are, have been measured for the past 15 years and will continue to be in an open-ended way to, to make sure that there is no, no, beach, uh, no sand beach lost Got and that, that uh, the people can continue so, to enjoy the beach. So well. having the restoration plan does not condemn the beach the other way around. It does. Yeah. After all, there were beaches there before the railroad track yeah. was built, yeah. before the, the highway, when the, when the lagoon was yeah. naturally open. Yeah. But it is, there's it always is been beaches there. It is a very complex project. A lot of science and engineering went into it. And it's taken a long time. Yes. It's taken uh, 15 years to get this project in motion. Uh, and now we finally have uh, the permits from the Coastal Commission. Um, in September, the project will start. Wow. Um, Tell us what will happen. Tell the viewers what mm -hmm. will happen, and will they lose the estuarine for a few months? Or the the time the project will take from start to finish is anticipated anticipated to be approximately two and a half to three years. Uh, during that time, um, there will be activity within the river valley. Uh, the all the dredging, and we're going to be dredging 2.3 cubic million yards out of the center of the river valley and putting it up on the sides of the river valley. That's so that the tidal flushing can reach back almost as far as El Camino. Uh, will that Real. cause noise, pollution, uh, it will traffic delays? It will, no. <laughs> Simple answer, no to the traffic delays. <laughs> Let's get that out right away. No to the traffic delays. Uh, all, of the, all of the project action occurs within the project, not on, not on city roads. Uh, so all of the material will be trucked within uh, the river valley itself. Uh, and it was a very important point to not take anything out uh, to dispose of elsewhere to avoid the truck traffic on, on, on local streets. And so the plan was devised to put all of that material up on the, on the hillsides and create another type of habitat, upland habitat, which mm -hmm. is important to work in association with the lowland and, and the, and the uh, and intertidal habitat. It all works together. The animals and the, uh, the birds and the animals and so forth that take advantage of the lagoon, uh, when, the, when the tide is in, uh, then they, they go back and they nest, for instance, in the upland habitat. So it, all of the 700 oh, plus acres will work together. That's wonderful. I, maybe I can add a few things about the visual impact. Uh, I think that I've discussed earlier how the, the land on the Laguna land that belongs to the park now is 700 acres. The restoration project only impacts 125 acres. So that's quick calculations, about 20%. Yes. So much of the activity is going to start east of the Freeway 5 and then west and not elsewhere. Mm -hmm. The two major visual impacts, one of them is the creation of a new big basin where the old uh, airport was. And that is just south of the river and uh, west of uh, Freeway 5. And the second impact... West of Freeway 5. That's right. That's, that's, that's correct. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. right. And uh, the second visual impact, which uh, when people write about and may alarm them, is the creation of two berms. And the berms will have to do with the, the control of the water so that we don't have siltation of the lagoon. And these berms are going to be 16 feet high. 16 feet is the height of the theoretical 100 foot flood. And when that came into the project, I, I was really worried about that. And may I finish? Yeah. <laughs> I went to measure the height of the berm over which the railroad crosses 
the Los Penasquitos Lagoon, yes. and that is also 16 feet high. So people will be surprised by that, and they may need explanation on why these two berms are being created. Got it. Thank okay. you, Jackie. Just yesterday, uh, I attended a lecture about global warming and the rise in sea level, yeah. which is predicted, uh, the predictions are very good, by the way, to be um, in the next 50 years or so, uh, if we're lucky, only three feet. The Bush a administration meter. says it's not going to happen. So. Well, uh, yeah, well. Three feet, that's good, though. Yeah, well, did you, did but, you, uh, that means the wetlands will, tidal level will be three feet higher than yeah. it normally is. Yeah, and okay. we'll have to adjust to that as we go. The lagoon yes. may go upstream <laughs> over 100 years from oh, now. Oh, yes. And in fact, and, and, it's going to make a big difference yeah. to wetlands everywhere. In ancient times, the lagoon mm -hmm. extended all the way up to where the Lake Hutt is Dam is. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. During a, a, you know, a period of much higher you know, water when... Uh, uh, before all the ice was that uh, old so the water was 395 used to have a sign on it that said no fishing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but at least you can say that we have room for it. You that's have, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what the lagoon is about. Sure. Is that's what lagoons are? Is the device that nature has evolved to take care of floods? Well, how wonderful! What a wonderful thing! So within two and a half years, people will be able to run a few miles along the lagoon, bicycle. Within two and a half years. They, they will, and, and beyond that, they will be able to uh, hike and bicycle and horseback ride all the way up to the mountains. Uh, not within the two or three years, we'll be able to get them to the, probably the polo, uh, the bank of the river along the polo fields by then. But we are working on connecting the trail. Our current trail now starts right up around the, on the dam and extends 20 miles into the San Pasquale Valley. You can go all the way to the intersection of Bandy Canyon Road and Highway 78 right now on our completed trail. Now we're working on connecting the trail from the coast to the Lake Hodges Dam. That should, hopefully we'll have that done within five years. What a wonderful thing for the residents of this area. Thank you very much for joining us, Jacqueline Wintra, Dick Bobitz, and John McGowan. You've been watching Hot Topics. I'm your host, Richard Levac. I'll see you next time. Copies of this program are available from the Del Mar Library at 1309 Camino Del Mar. This program is a production of the Del Mar Television Foundation. Email questions or comments to hottopics at delmartv.com.